How far would you go to keep the peace with your daughter-in-law? Many fear that if they don't bend over backwards, they're gonna lose precious time with their grandkids. But what if I told you that's not true? Today, we're exploring an alternative approach that balances your needs while maintaining those precious family bonds. Stick around to learn how you can set healthy boundaries without straining relationships. Imagine this, every time your daughter-in-law comes over, she expects you to cater to her vegan needs entirely. We're talking Sunday brunch, casual barbecues, or a holiday feast. You name it, you're cooking an equivalent vegan dish for every meat dish, yet she never brings a dish to share, never helps clean up, and to top it off, she criticizes basically every dish you make her. She even told you that if her demands aren't met, that her and the kids will stay home and she'll just send your son to visit. And here's the kicker. You just found out her own mother, her own mother, does not cater to her vegan needs, but somehow you are expected to. I'm about to share my thoughts on this. You can kind of tell I'm fired up, but I wanna know yours. Thumbs up emoji in the comments if you would cater to your daughter-in-law and just suck it up and do it to keep the peace, or thumbs down emoji if you would set some boundaries. So yes, this story fires me up. I am not a mother-in-law, but I can definitely empathize with the fear of being alienated from your grandkids. But man, to see someone being taken advantage of like this, I mean, could you ever imagine asking someone to cater for you like this and then to threaten them to not bring your kids if they didn't comply? All the while, your mother doesn't even do this? I could never. I mean, this is unbelievable. But many grandparents experience anxiety about being estranged from their grandkids. Before we get into that, if you're new to the channel, welcome to this corner of the YouTube universe where we believe boundaries fix almost everything. If you're ready to stress less and strengthen your relationships by setting healthy boundaries, I invite you to join our community. We're super supportive and awesome. So just hit that subscribe button and stick around. Okay, back to the grandparents feeling a sense of pressure to stay in line so they're not pushed or pulled away from their grandkids. This study is going to shock you. A recent survey revealed that 41% of Gen Xers reportedly have a close relationship with their grandparents. Compare that to only 18% of Gen Zers. That indicates a potential decline in grandparent-grandchild relationships. Estrangement, alienation, whatever you want to call it, this fear is real and it can be incredibly devastating and traumatic. In fact, it's estimated that one out of four American families will experience estrangement at some point in their lifetime. And I've already talked about that in terms of how much it's impacted our family. So is it fair for the daughter-in-law to expect the mother-in-law to cater exclusively to her needs without any contribution? Well, let's break this down because I believe there are three signs that your daughter-in-law's actions are super selfish and entitled. Number one, one-sided expectations. She expects all her needs to be met without contributing at all. Number two, lack of gratitude. It really doesn't seem like she appreciates all your effort. She doesn't acknowledge it or appreciate everything you do for her. Number three, emotional manipulation. She threatens to withhold visits from the grandkids if her demands aren't met. Now, how can you navigate this delicate situation while maintaining the peace? Here are three tips for setting boundaries that are both clear and kind. First, communicate clearly and compassionately. I would address this issue directly but kindly. For example, you might say, Susie, I'm simplifying my hosting strategy. I'll definitely include one delicious, scrumptious vegan dish. But if you would like anything else, please feel free to bring some of your favorites to share for everyone. Next, set reasonable expectations. Explain that while you're happy to accommodate her dietary needs, it's not feasible to create an entirely separate menu every time. Set clear limits on what you can reasonably do. And finally, encourage collaboration. Invite her over to help. Like, come on over, Susie, and help me cook. Invite her to help with meal planning. Or invite her to come early to help you prepare the dishes ahead of time. This not only shares the load, but it will strengthen your bond because you're gonna be spending time together. But I wanna hear from you, our fellow boundary enthusiast and helpful Mind Your Boundary community. Have you ever faced a situation like this? How did you handle it? Share some thoughts and tips in the comments. Your experience can help others navigate their own boundary challenges. So can you set boundaries without straining relationships? 
absolutely. It's about finding a balance between accommodating others and taking care of yourself. By setting clear boundaries, you can foster a more healthier and respectful relationship and keep resentment at bay. And you know how much I hate resentment. If you're looking for more ways to bond with your daughter-in-law, make sure you watch the next video. Remember, setting boundaries isn't about pushing people away. It's about creating space where everyone's needs are respected. Thank you so much for tuning into the Mind Your Boundaries podcast. If you found this episode helpful, could you hit that thumbs up like like button? And if you found it super helpful, please share it with at least one person who might need to hear this message. Until next time, friend, make sure you keep minding your boundaries.